Tom Smith, here we are at beautiful Ansari's in Egan once again for the Mortgages and BS show on the Alive and Social Network. Hold on a second. You got your sound effect. He's got a sipping sound effect. Often we start the show with the can cracking sound effect, but ah, that ah sound hey, effect will work today. Just just so people realize that those that were trying to listen like at 5.30, 5.45, and you heard nothing, that was the best part of the show. I, that <laughs> always is. It's the calm before the storm. It's just entertaining and enlightening all at once. You know, what? I like I like hanging out here on Thursdays because of the crap. Oh yeah, yeah. No, you're I not. Mean, you looked at me when not, you said no, that. No, not not you. But oh, I mean, okay. I mean, all you can eat crap. I'm still surprised we haven't got any for gratis. But you know, I keep trying to get us some. Well, you keep working on that, and we'll just keep working on making this show the most outstanding podcast in the mortgage finance and moreover BS world. The free beer works for me, John. Do, that we can do. Look at these guests we got here. Dave Sinekin's here. How are you, Sinny? Good to have you, brother. I just don't get why the show is called Mortgages and BS and not Mortgages and BT. Well, thank you. Ooh. Thank you very much. Well, Seems you know. like an obvious connection I like to me. that. You know what? That, that I mean, makes sense. Well, the name value we're trying to play well, up With here. the agent thing, 15% worked just fine for Perfect. you? Perfect. 15% right. works. Yeah. It's uh, great to be here, though, maybe for it's, real. Maybe it's Brian and Smith with, with the BS There part. we go. There we go. That'll work. Well, they, won't let us say, they won't let us say baloney and stuff. So. Yeah, that's right. So there we go. We just got to go with the BS. And Jeff Carver's here, too. Carver, good to see you, brother. Hey, BT. How you doing, man? Good, man. Good it's to have you be on here. board. Jeff Carver, the greatest lips in the biz. That's Indeed. What, look how he cradles the trumpet while he talks. Too. I know. Kind of like you cradling oh, the mic. Oh, it's like if you had a sheet. That's suit. what you were talking about with yeah. the trumpet. Because <laughs> I thought that was the 15 minutes of silence before we got the show started. <laughs> Jeff and I Jeff and I had it. We, well, you're, you're, you're ca- we need a little catch-up time. Well, your bi-gay conversation. You got it. Okay. Indeed. Indeed. Everything's, and now that relates to my... Now, let's, let's explain that right away. Because Shall we get the rest uh, of it in there, too? Summer we, and sweats? We, we <laughs> had the round table going. We've got uh, two, you know, three Packer fans here, and one of which is... Uh, also a Vikings fan, and I had to explain, well, I'm bi when it comes to my football affiliation. It is I like the Packers, I like the Vikings, and so that's where that came from. So what do you do next Sunday when the Packers come to TCF Bank Stadium? Do you I don't, just ignore the game and I, just don't I, want to take I sides? Have to, I have to ignore that game. Really? I have to ignore that game. That's yeah. tough to do. I know. See, exactly. Now, when I, had, when I had season tickets for the Vikes, of course, I'm a Packer fan. I would go to Vikings games. I cheer for the Vikes, except when the Packers came to town. Yeah, there you go. Packers came down. I had my green and gold on. I was Packers there all the way. I had a hard time whenever they would have somebody from the Packers yeah. come play for the Vikings. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I get a little confused. I'd have like you know a shirt on and some you know purple socks or something like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, uh, I I get confused just thinking about you wearing that kind of stuff. But Cindy, to be honest, I, you know what? I what I, I'll be honest. I actually flip a coin. Yeah. Do you? Yeah, I decide flip which a, you know, way to go. Yeah, so a little heads, tails, and just decide which is going to be heads, which is going to be tails and then away we go and it's then fair. that's who i cheer for you know i like it and then just the second game you just go the opposite and right? then just, just let just it, it let it flow the other way All exactly right. exactly that's good mm-hmm. that now for fun. those that don't know just be throw it out there dave sinica might be the most world-renowned packer fan in the twin cities well, i think, think so yeah. world yeah world renowned in the twin world cities, <laughs> in the twin cities. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm sorting that out and i'm going to be back to you as soon as regionally I <laughs> maybe regionally renowned yeah. i mean i mean dave has been i mean i met dave what's it been jeff 15 years now we met dave yeah it's probably been about that 15 yeah maybe and uh maybe 15 dave actually came out on the radio as a packer fan at k fan and everything yep. like that and he had came out pack, yes, came, came you know out. i had the pack he has the packer preview all that kind of stuff Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of people that don't like Dave, but there's a lot of people that love Dave. Yeah, that's right. It's there, there's no middle ground. I've got uh, you know guys that you know put my picture up in a dartboard and have fun. Mm-hmm. Boing boing. And there are those that won't stop hugging me. So there's no there's no gray area at all with <laughs> that, me. That just I have your clean. picture up. I only <laughs> hug I only hug him when he buys me tequila. But that's exactly. another story. <laughs> exactly. No, it's been. Uh, it, it's nice to be able to say I'm the only guy that does a radio talk show for a sports team on the arch rivals. Flagship station. Sports radio station. Yeah. I ran into Peter King from uh, you know the MMQB, the football. <clears throat> Carver has no idea who I'm talking about. No, but it's, it's interesting anyway. But it sounds p- like military jargon is it, what it is. It you know? Well, He's, you got a BFD on the MMQB. And you're doing a great job, Jerry. The, Keep it yeah, up. The MM, so anyway, <laughs> he, he does this NFL uh, website. And I ran into him in Chicago before the Packer Bears NFC title game, whatever that was, four years ago. He's a notorious coffee drinker. So running into him at Starbucks was just like, of course, you're at Starbucks. Yeah. And... So I'm explaining to him, I do this Packer show on the Viking station. I said, you ever heard of anybody doing that? Like, is there a Brown show in Pittsburgh or a Bronco show in Oakland? And he's like, yeah, right. So, yeah, that's going to play. He couldn't believe that I really had a show. And I couldn't get up. He had this, it was freezing out. He had this frozen 
booger stuck in one nostril. <laughs> oh, no. And I wanted to As say something. Crab. <laughs> oh, I felt so bad for him. I wanted to tell him, oh. but I just didn't know him well enough. But yeah. that's all I think of now when I think of Peter King. A, fro- a frozen well, bat oh, in the belfry. And it, but I think one of the biggest differences here, though, is you have so many Wisconsin transplants. Yes. I think that's what makes it such a big well, deal. It's, I mean, the, it's the border thing, too. You know, they right? call it a border battle, but, right there but it's, not like, it's not like you're going to go to Milwaukee and get a whole bunch of bear, you know, bears still going on down there either. I mean, no. that's why brother yeah, lives go to Illinois. There's more but distance there. There's there is that, more distance. There's that distance. That's, that's what makes the difference. You know, and, and, it's, and it's, you know, let's, I'm going to be very honest to anybody who's a K-Fan listener. Carl Gerbschmidt is a true Packer fan. Yeah, you can tell by listening to him. He is yeah. definitely a true Packer Well, I'm a true Packer fan, but I don't quite, well, you know, at least not right now. No, it's... um. It's been a good run, you know, and the nice thing is I usually get the last laugh, which is also kind of fun. There you, you know? go. Mm-hmm. You know, we all have our fun, but let's just see what happens on the field, and more often than not over 20 years, we've gotten the last laugh. You've uh, had some pretty good runs. It's been, uh, well, where been did good. you grow up in, in Wisconsin? I grew up in Milwaukee. Okay, right in, well, yes. right in Milwaukee. I, but my dad was right. a St. Paul guy, so okay. we came up here every summer to visit grandparents, cousins, and so I, I knew Viking fans. We had fun growing up just back and forth, but my dad being a St. Paul guy in the 40s, 30s and 40s, Obviously, there was no Vikings sure. here. Oh, so yeah. He grew up a Packer fan sure. up here, so it was easy for him to bury. Were you right in the girl. city in Milwaukee or one of the suburbs? Um, or where I was. You? Um, it's kind of called the Edina of Milwaukee, yeah. where I grew Go up. Go ahead, just tell most people. Whitefish know. Bay. Yeah, it was Whitefish yeah. Bay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I knew. Yeah, my, my wife's from the Eden Prairie, Brookfield. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's just about the same. And I ended up married, marrying an Edina girl, so maybe I just felt comfortable with there that. There you um, go. But, uh, yeah, right on the lake, right on Lake Michigan. Yeah. No, you got a nice Sendix up there, so that's always correct. good. correct. Great Sendix. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, Which is sort of the Lunds and Byerleys of Milwaukee. Indeed, yeah. but not quite to that level, I don't think. Yeah. I think Lunds and Byerleys has them there. But uh, it's, a, it's a good place to grow up. But I think, yeah. like, like me, so many people realize Twin Cities is where it's at. You know, Milwaukee's nice. It's kind of quiet. Nice to visit. Yeah, Art Chicago's Museum. a bit too much. Yeah. This is yeah. sort of that great middle ground. And, Carver's falling asleep on Seneca and talking. I don't know. No, that's okay. It's really interesting. <laughs> I love you guys. B- I love B- this. BT, you, really, you forget we know. Mo- you forget we we know most of. This. How about that Ray Nitsky, fa- huh? Absolutely well, fascinating. That Ray Nitsky. He had a great start. game on Guess Sunday. Okay. You're doing your Bart Starr now. Hold on, hold on. I'll tell you, Bart Starr looked great on Sunday 40 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Let, let's do one thing to make sure so you all know. All four of us have known each other almost 15 years. Quite a while. And to clarify, why Jeff's being such a smart ass right now. I had my own mortgage company years ago. Yep. Jeff was my marketing guy. He helped me with all my marketing. Dave was my account rep at Clear Channel Radio when it was still Clear Channel and Radio. And I was one of your endorsers. And you were one of my endorsers. Yep. So we've all known each other over 10 years. Mm-hmm. So we shared a lot of stories. So mm-hmm. what we're talking to Dave about, all four of us pretty much know. So Jeff's just falling asleep. Yeah. But one we're going to do, do the same to Jeff when he talks, okay, Dave? One no time, question. One time I went into BT's studio and Jewel had just been in there. Do you remember that? Yeah, the artist Jewel. And yes, she yes, smelled. Sure. So good. Oh, Your yeah. studio smelled so good. I thought it was you. It wasn't you, BT. No. Was it the day that she came in wearing that fur? When she was wearing that fur? You she did... was gone by the time. Oh, I see. By just the, time but I just was... the smell. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, well, how do you know it was Jewel? Might I, have been I, me. I don't. You know, I to this to... day, you don't know. I you went, know. BT. You know what's funny about you and mm-hmm. uh, and my smell? Yes. Is that every time you hug me, you say the same thing. I go, oh, my God. Ah, you, Jewel. Jewel was just here. <laughs> I went into BT studio one day after Chris Schaefer was in there and there was a smell, but that's another story. That's it. Yeah. Schaefer has a completely different story there too about you you know what the thing when you were doing tom's marketing stuff yes, I, I never knew uh what a remarkable horn player you were and i only knew that knowledge about you after we got to know each other a little bit and, I, and then i finally saw you play and it's like geez carver's rocking this this world you here. know bt when we'd have those conversations at costco we would talk about my trumpet playing and your radio personality thing and we had a lot of fun doing that at costco Right by the carts. Right and there. People would say, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me. And we'd move, and that was all that kind of Costco road, thing. Crossroads of the Western yeah, suburbs. Was, you very know. much so. It's the Costco right by your office, Cindy. So oh, yeah. that one. Yeah. The St. Louis Park, Park one. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Who is your favorite trumpet player of all time? Favorite trumpet player of all time? Probably, like who's your go-to guy? Probably Chet Baker. Oh, you ever nice heard of choice. Chet? Oh, absolutely. Oh, Chet yeah. Baker, yeah. He was the master of emotion. He recorded over 900 songs. Mostly because he didn't have any money and he had to keep recording because he didn't have any money. He was he, always broke. He yeah. was always broke. A lot of drugs, that yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. However, very prolific. You know, did a lot of recording, did a lot of good stuff and a lot of standards and mm-hmm. all that stuff. It was so, kind of funny. Was, I was in New Orleans this last weekend, right? And jazz, music, all that kind of stuff. Yes, sir. And every time I heard a trumpet player down there, I'd go, Carver could do that. 
Yeah. Dead serious. Jeff, I'm dead serious. I was down there. I was listening to these guys because I've heard you play for a while. Mm -hmm. And there's some good players down there. But I thought to myself, this reminds me of Jeff because they were playing some jazz and they were playing a little blues. And I, that's what Jeff, especially, especially blah, blah, blah. specialty is like a jazz and stuff like that. Yeah. That's what I thought of. And I thought, what a great idea to have Jeff this week because it's going to be fun. And I'm going to pretend it's New Orleans. And I'm going to, well, I'll have another beer. I thought we were going to go to New Orleans. <laughs> and I had this totally mixed up. That you thought, you know. I was waiting at the airport for you guys. And then and suddenly. <laughs> no Bourbon came. Street, baby. Yeah. And well, the, I don't know. The, BT and Cindy were with me. <laughs> and the sign said. Carver and Sari's <laughs> Egan. Yeah. You know. no, no, wait, well, no. Yeah. and Sari's and Egan. You can turn it into a little New Orleans in your head, though. I can. And so I'm working on that right so now. So I, I think what you should do, although Chuck, uh, uh, the Mangione guy, is yes. a flugelhorn player. Yes, sir. Uh, I think though uh, you could regale us, uh, regale us with just a, a little opening line from Feels So Good. Just a so little bit good. of that. Little, hold on, but I'm going to announce it um, in that smooth jazz uh, announcer oh, style. Oh, nice. All right, be good. So. This right, is going to this I is going to be my ringtone, by yeah. the way. All right, very good. Hey, everybody, we're live at Ansari's in Egan, Ansari's Mediterranean Grill and Lounge, your place in Egan and the entire Twin Cities for great Mediterranean food and atmosphere. And now here on M and BS Radio, Jeff Carver with a little taste of feel so good. David Ansari is the lips of Jeff Carver. Free Jeff, bird. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff's lips have played a lot of places in town, by the way. <laughs> I'm just going to let that one lie, Tom. Boy. Um, Boy. <laughs> by the way, Boy, a guy, plays nice. very awesome. a guy just... a little golf round, please. Come on, a little golf round. Hey, for hey yeah. speaking, of, thank you. Thank speaking you. of golf, remember when Paul Krause told us to get lessons? <laughs> yeah. He told you, and then he told you to tell me to get lessons. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff, you remember that one, Dave? We were golfing, and I think it was a Clear Channel deal. And it was Jeff, myself, I can't remember who else, and we are golfing. And get, it cross turns to us and goes, so you guys have good jobs, right? And we go, yeah, yeah. He goes, you guys make good money? And we're like, oh, yeah, yeah. And he goes, do you ever think of golf lessons? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. You, you, you <laughs> could probably afford it. And that's, uh, what, that's yeah. when I turned to Tommy and I went, who's this guy? <laughs> Doesn't he know who we yeah, are? Yeah, who's this guy? <laughs> get him out of here. Get him out of here. We're, we're trying to golf here. No, Tommy, I want to make sure we do this during the course of the show today. In that, we've missed, I think, a couple of episodes of So You Want to Buy a House. And the show is mortgages and BS, after all. So, from that perspective, what's on your mind today as we do the mortgages and BS show? More BS to come, but I think we need to, we need to fit some things in. And the little uh, text exchange that we had as we set up the show, which was, there's a few things about mortgages I want to talk about them on the mortgage show today. And what was, Carver, what did I type back to him? Duh. 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 Right. Before you get into it, can I ask a question, serious question? Uh, okay. As long as you're going to start talking mortgages, is this the time I can run to the bathroom sure. real quick? Sure, go ahead. Go ahead. Do, yeah. I, do I get to take a pee break? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I'll, you, be right, you, I'll be right you back. You've had a third of a beer. Thank you. I'll, I'll be right back. <laughs> you, Tell right. me if I miss anything. Though. Okay. We're, we're all well, good. you know a lot yeah. about mortgages. All right. Well, a couple things I want to hit real fast. Uh, first of all, remember we talked about the, the Federal Reserve, about it's not what they do, it's what they say? Yep. Okay. Well, you know, a couple weeks ago, they had their little comments. It was just a little bit different. The bond market went weird. And it kind of settled down a little bit. And then what they call non-farm payrolls or employment data came out last Friday. And, of course, it's got everybody in a tizzy because there were more jobs created than they expected. And the unemployment rate went down a little bit. Again, this is all tied into it's not what the Fed does or what they says. So right there, the bond market switched the direction on the market. So now the Feds can sit back and relax a little bit. Rates haven't really got affected hard yet. It's sort of a cat good. and mouse thing. Oh, isn't yeah, it's it? a yeah. Game. it's a game. Two big things, though, I want to talk about because we were talking about so you want to buy a house. And we ran into today is there were two big changes in guidelines this year. It used to be, first of all, it's student loans. It used to be if you had a student loan on your credit report and it was deferred for 12 months or more, you didn't have to count as, as a liability against you. Okay. That changed about six months ago. Now you have to. And we're starting to see a lot of these first-time buyers, how drastically it's affecting them because of the fact that their student loan is deferred, but we have to count the payment even though it's out there 12 months or more. So it's important to understand when you're getting pre-qualified how these things are going to affect you. The other one that's really the biggie, and HUD came out with this, or FHA came out with this in September, and we ran into this today, too. You can get a gift to buy a house. 
right? We've talked about how you can get a gift to buy a house. So mom and dad gifted kids to buy some money to buy a house. Down payment money yep, or whatever yep. the case may be. we got a copy of their cancel chat, the whole thing. HUD now requires that we get a copy of the bank statement from the person gifting the money. Really? So if I wanted to gift Corey money to buy a house, he's going to have to get a copy of my bank statement showing that money in the account. And if there's any weird deposits going into my account, they're going to question them. So like a sort of a... I don't want to say it in this turn in this context, but like a drug money thing, well, there's or, two, or just there's you know, two, yeah, two reasons weird they do it. What you know, that's all that banking regulation that I came for around. Two minutes, and we started talking about laundering all of a sudden. Actually, you know, that is, that's one of the reasons. Okay, so they're talking about money laundry, terrorist money, stuff like that. That's one of them. Yeah, okay. that's why I brought it. The up. other yeah. one is when you buy a property, a lot of people are involved in the transaction. What they're concerned about is, let's say, I, Corey's buying a house from Dave, and I'm gifting he, Corey money, and I give him some money. And all of a sudden, you look at my bank statement, there's just weird deposits coming into my account. Where'd that money come from? It could have come from Dave. It could have come from Dave. I see that. That's how yeah, weird they've that gotten about it because path, of the stuff yeah. going on. Now, I can borrow money and gift it to them, but they want to make sure where it's coming from. So we're starting to see some of this weird stuff pop up now. So it's even more important now when a buyer's thinking about buying a house that they sit down and talk to a lender ahead of time because they need to understand how all these different things could affect them going forward and why the things are being asked for because, let's face it, my business doesn't really make any sense. I mean, it, it really doesn't. I mean, there's, there's rules and regulations that I've sat here for all these years going, this is stupid. But it's what the rule and the regulation is. We don't set them. Yeah. We're just trying to get somebody their loan done. Yep. And take care of business. Exactly. Yeah, and get them into that house. I mean, ask Dave. I've taken a couple pints of blood out of him. I would say a couple quarts <laughs> over the years, but uh, number of transactions. Number of transactions. And we've had situations that have come up, I mean, with self-employment and stuff like that. But the thing is, Dave and I talk, and he understands it, and he gets it. So it, it's worked out well. Right on. And that is, that's part of, that's a whole part of the home buying process is being educated. So those are my three big things today. First time buyers beware. Rates aren't going anywhere. I still think we're looking good. And Jeff, I'm not giving you any money. So I got a question for you, Tom. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, so when we hear all the time about the Fed, you know, getting ready to raise rates and then all of a sudden nothing happens and stuff, how does that affect the mortgage rate? Is that directly tied to the mortgage rate? Jeff's then? asking a question because he remembers these answers actually. When you hear about the Feds doing this stuff, and we've talked, oh, you know what I'm talking about. What, when you hear about the Feds talking about stuff, we've said this before, is when they raise interest rates or lower interest rates, it really directly affects overnight lending and or things that are variable rate type mortgages. It doesn't necessarily affect a fixed rate. Sort of those longer term right. things, yeah. But, but the bond market, because of the fact, and I've said this, they're investing with all these billions of dollars and they're out of touch with reality, they will still react to what the Fed says or what the Fed does, regardless of how minute or whatever it is. That goes back to our Greenspan stories and all the other yep. stuff we talked mm -hmm. about. So you've got, you know, the feds this last time made these comments. We talked about that. Sure enough, they make these comments. They change it slightly. We get this data here just recently. Yeah, it's better, but you know what's happening is they're creating jobs right now for seasonal type activity. There's people getting hired full time to be working over Thanksgiving, Christmas, and stuff like that. Come January, February, we're going to see all those jobs disappear. Mm -hmm. So it's always like a roller coaster. It's always doing that. But the bottom line is rates are still so freaking good. I don't understand why people aren't buying or refinancing. Yep, it's still the time, man. Yep. Now's the time. Now's the essence. Except for Carver. <laughs> I don't. I don't, why know, why, I I don't know why we're picking on me right now. <laughs> easy not? mark. Just an easy mark. That's yeah. all. It's that simple. <laughs> <laughs> mark, summer, spring. <laughs> oh, summer. Dave, where are you living now? I live in Minnetonka. Okay. On the, uh, I like to call it the east side. I, there's no lakes anywhere near where I live. But uh, great school district for my three kids and just a great spot, you know. 15 minutes to downtown. It's not yeah. so bad. Yeah. Nice. And, uh, and the mortgage, Tommy helped you get into that yeah, one, too? Yeah, he did. Yeah. Uh, we... Bought the house four years ago, I think it is. Yep. Mm -hmm. And last year we switched from a thirty to a fifteen. Yep. Yep. To and, and well, we really... refinanced the old house too. I mean, we did something on oh, that. Oh yeah, back yeah. No, yep. my, yeah, that's right. My old house we bought as well. And let's see. And and I, see, I helped Carver get into his house. Yep. I and, where you, and where are you at, Jeff? St. He's Louis not Park. in Minnetonka. Yep. <laughs> I'm not in Minnetonka. At St. Louis Park, which is awesome. Actually. No, I, I like St. Louis oh, yeah. Park. And I do, too. I, I, I lived it. in St. Louis and, yeah, Park. We did a couple of things over the years, Tom, you and I. Have, uh, My office is in St. Louis Park. Yeah, that, when the old house was in St. Louis Park. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I had one there as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we've all done, we've all done, I've, wait a minute, I've made money off of you guys, I've made, and you guys have all made money off of me. That's what makes the world go round, my love. friend. Money, yeah. That's like a, the love making the world go round. Yeah. 
How's this new gig going for you so far with Academy Mortgage? You digging this so far? You know, I am. I mean, I mean I'm a little frustrated because you know me. I'm kind of a running type of guy. Yep. Of course, when you start a new gig off, you got to start with walking, jogging, then running. So, of course, I want to run right away. But it's going great. I mean, the support I'm getting from these guys is getting set up is awesome. I'm seeing some of their tools are fantastic. I'm really excited what I'm going to be rolling out to uh, consumers and my referral partners here over the course of the next 30 days and going forward because I'm going to be giving my referral partners more tools to sell homes. And what I'm noticing, too, because of, of, of some stuff like I put on Facebook today, this company actually underwrites to what the automated finding show. What I mean by that is, like, when you go get a mortgage, we take all the garbage into the computer, right, and it spits us back what it needs. And then we have to validate the information. There's a lot of companies that will say, well, that's great, but we still want this, or we still want this, or we still want this, or we still want this. And they're not, not knock any companies out there, but a lot of these companies want extra stuff. Like, I hate to say it, where I was wanted extra stuff. More than necessary. Right. More than needed. So we're sitting here looking at some of these loans we're doing right now, and we're going, wait a minute. That loan we just closed at XYZ Company, we wouldn't have needed this. We wouldn't have had this. We would have had, I mean, it's. I like it. I, th- I think their philosophy kind of goes along with a, a war room that Jeff and I sat in one day with Frank Pillsbury where we came up with Simple, Fast, and Hassle-Free. Yes. I mean, I really think they have that mentality that they really want to do things right. And Streamline right the process yep. a little bit. Yeah. Yep. And, and I could give you lots of examples but I would bore you to death. But bottom line is I'm going, I think it's going to make a lot of mortgage situations easier for me. Good to, for you. To do. Good for you. What are some of these tools? I mean, when you mentioned tools that might have been not 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 been at your previous uh, uh, shop or others that you've had before. Well, probably one of the big ones I'm going to have, I'll be rolling it out shortly. It's, a, it's an application. It's an application tail to me. And it's, you know, you download it on your Droid or your iPhone or whatever. And it allows you not just to do mortgage financing stuff like I, on the one that I have presently that I, that I pay for myself. Sure. They're going to give me this one. This one will actually allow them to uh, search homes and stuff like that and school districts and everything else. Pretty cool. So it's going to give the buyer some tools to do things like that, which will be yeah. pretty cool. And then there's couple, some other things they're coming up with where uh, when a buyer buys a house, they'll be able to get like a free uh, uh, like a security system in their home, things like that. So there's some, a lot of alliances they've set up that I think are buyer-friendly. Things that are going to help people. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, Free pizza for life, you know, once a week. I, well, I was thinking free crab legs every Thursday at Ansari's, but I haven't been able to take talk dark. Occasional dark passes yet. to Lambo. Oh, Dave, Dave, yes. There we go. Now <laughs> we're talking. I think I'm supposed to be over at a house playing trumpet for them as well, like going to That's bed. worked into the app. Yeah. That yeah. would be sweet. Yeah. 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 A little bit well, when, you know, when, the, when the bar moves in, we're going to have a ribbon cutting, and Dave will be there to play. Or will? Jeff. Dave will be there to play because yeah. Why will Dave he's be gonna there be to play? What am I going to play? My kazoo? He's yeah. going to play his kazoo. You are. Jeff's going to be there to paint the place. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, musicians always got to have a day gig. You yeah. know, that's, that's right. Sort of that's hey, right. you'll make more money off of me on doing that than you will trumpet. I can't afford the trumpet part. <laughs> or, 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 or they don't need a day gig, gig given what's going on with you lately. You've been traveling a whole lot and really doing a lot of recording work and all sorts of cool stuff. I got to tell you, anybody out there listening wants to hear a great concert. Monday, December 14th, Sean Johnson and the Big Band Experience at the Ames Center. I love uh, that venue. That's a great venue. That's also known as the Dan Gustafson Center. We shot our PBS special there a couple of years ago. And it is fantastic. And with uh, Sean, you mean? With yeah, Sean, yeah. yeah. Sean. Some people know Sean from Tonic Solfa. He does all the lead singing and yep. stuff with that. But my goodness, that's a great band. And uh, um, we have one show a year in town, and that's the show. So if you can still get tickets, um, contact the AIM Center or Ticketmaster. Is it a holiday type show, or it's, is it just more of a music show that has a few holiday things thrown in? Yeah, it's more of a it's more of a music show, and then we do some holiday tunes in there yeah. because it's that it's time the holiday of year. season. Well, did, sure, did, didn't year. you do a holiday CD like in the last year or two? I keep remembering something. I did about three years ago. I did. You can get that on iTunes. I did that with a keyboard player named Raj Duren. I, yeah, I know Raj. Yeah. I like Raj. Yeah, it's it's a fantastic. Uh, it's a fantastic CD. Yeah. Well, you've done a couple CDs over the year. I mean, I was involved in that one back like 2003, Southern 2004. Comfort. Yep. Was a sponsor he's done, I mean, so Jeff's got a couple deals out there where you get his music. It's not like it, him doing a, a no, I have that record. Or something else. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have Southern Comfort. Yeah. I like that record. Yeah. And what, what, I drink nice Southern you? Comfort. <laughs> and so we got <laughs> that going for us. Well, from totally from totally Wisconsin, I drink a Southern Comfort old fashioned. It's totally close enough. But Jeff does know a lot of different musicians, and he's had the opportunity to sit in with a lot of guys, and he's sat in with him, and I've had the opportunity to meet some of these guys. I'll tell you, he, he's a class player. I mean, he's a great, he was a, he's a great friend. He's a great marketing guy. He's a class player. But to me, he's, he's a great friend. That's mm-hmm. all I Thanks, man. Yeah. And so is Cindy. And he looks he's, a lot like Louis Armstrong. If the light catches him right, it's amazing. <laughs> it's a separated yeah. You know, and I thought of that at the Louis Armstrong Park in New Orleans, but you weren't there. No. 
No. Do, do I said, you, is that Jeff? No, it's Louis Armstrong. Do, do, oh. you, do, you, do you have the same affinity for colonic cleansing that Louis and his wife had? That's the strangest story I ever heard about I Louis. Got, well, uh, what is it? No, did you know that? No. no what? Oh, yeah, they, they like to do the enemas a lot. No. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, yeah, that was their, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I feel that uh, a clean backside leads to better health. <laughs> that was Louis, and Louis couldn't lose it. He couldn't lose any weight after that. Man, he was just he, was, he and his wife. It's time for another squirt, honey. You know, and <laughs> boom, they clean, clean out the old. Backside. Wonder if that was you know. I didn't have foreplay in the air. I did not know that. I now you do. I do. Yeah. And do I have to look that up, or can I take your word for that? I'm just going to take his word for it. Wiki for people are eating, too. When you, when, you, <laughs> when you see that Hello, Dolly, hello. that vintage YouTube video, you'll be thinking, <laughs> yeah. Is that what he shouted out? Hello, hello Dolly. Hello, Dolly. Oh, 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 boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. It's Louis Dolly. Oh, oh boy. God. What a wonderful world. <laughs> yeah, oh, my. Bring a whole yeah. new meaning to that. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Louis is going to show you the moon now. That's right. <laughs> Sydney, are you Excuse making me while I sit? Oh boy. <laughs> are, are you making a pilgrimage to a Lambo soon? Uh, I will. I'm going to go twice this year. I'm gonna, nice. Well, I actually, I'm going Monday for business. I'm going to miss the game. But I'm going to go Thanksgiving night. Bears are in Thanksgiving night. That's the uh, Brett Favre yeah, retirement uh, ceremony. I'm so jealous on that one. And then uh, the, the Viking game, season finale. In fact, I don't know the link yet, but we're going to be announcing it next week. We're going to be uh, uh, online auction. Chance to go to the Packer-Viking game with me. Well, I'm not going to drive with you, but I'll meet you there. Would you drive with me? I would drive with you if you uh, win the online auction, yes. Okay. Uh, someone in the friend will get here. to go. My brother has a suite at Lambeau, so he's offering two of his seats for the Packer Viking game January nice. 3rd. Um, and, it, you know, January 3rd to be able to sit inside, if you like, oh, or yeah. outside. Uh, he also just got a licensing deal with NFL for blankets. He's the My brother's company makes the blankets now. So he's going to give blankets to these winners as well. Oh, so sweet. He uh, makes them for the, all I the teams the in the NFL? He will or? now. Yeah, he just got the license for the wow, NFL. So he's doing all the, super, all the throws cool. and blankets. So, Are you doing the marketing for him too? Uh, maybe someday if okay. we get to that point. But uh, if, if you want to know more about that, uh, TC Head Cheese on Twitter, I'll be announcing it next week. That's going to be a pretty <laughs> – we're raising money for Loaves and Fishes. I was nice. going to ask you where is, the money's uh, going. Yeah, yeah, my wife's uh, development director at Loaves and Fishes, which nice. has 20 – Sites they feed two thousand hungry people well, in the metro. Let me tell you, his wife day. is nice. active in that. I mean, yeah. I watch I watch the Facebook stuff. She's got a lot going on. That it's a you know what? It's a great organization. We've brought our kids to help prepare food and yeah. and serve and clean up, and it's it's amazing to, to see what families are able to get nutritious hot meals. That's great. Every day, all yeah. over the metro area. So, Loaves and Fishes does a great job. And, and what's weird is, Dave, not, not to knock that part, but the, the weird part with going to the game, okay, Dave's going Monday. I'm going to be at the game, so we don't even get to see each other, which yeah, makes me it's sad. disappointing. Unless you want to stick around, I'll be there about and noon on Monday. My kids need to go to college on Monday, except the one never goes anyway, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> no, whatever. Yeah. 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 Uh, with Thanksgiving, what are you, where are you going to do Thanksgiving then? So, be there for the game. Yeah, so Thanksgiving. Brother's uh, house then? Or? My family lives in Milwaukee. There my mom's go. there. Yeah. My brother's there. And we always do Thanksgiving at his house. And. We're going to go early, have the 2 o'clock dinner, and then jump in the car about 4.30 or 5 and head up to Green Bay. It's about Perfect. two hours and yeah. not even. Nice. That's going, and, to be unre- uh, that's going to be unreal in there that night. Oh, that's going to be prime time, oh, Thanksgiving yeah, thanks- night. Oh, the Thanksgiving Pack- game. Have, have, you been, have you been reading the uh, follow-ups on Bart, how they're making sure he kind of knows what's going yeah, on? And he's stuff. had some health problems, a yep. couple strokes, and he's trying to get there. He wants to be there. <laughs> he wants to, be able to walk on his own and <laughs> stuff. I Car- Carver's just dying to riff his Bart star again here. I, <laughs> I hope that Ray Niski's in there. <laughs> He's the he's, late great. Hey, you got any participation Nisky. trophies or ribbons there, Jeff? He's back. No. Has anybody <laughs> seen Lombardi? No. But I, here. but I also like that Brett Favre, too. <laughs> yeah. like you're, get, you're getting some. The game I get to go to that I'm excited about, I get to go to the Dallas game. That'll be a That'll fun be game. That'll be a fun one. Uh, yeah, Romo they, should be back by then. They still hate. Well, and Jordy should be back, too. No, Jordy's not. Yeah, they were saying Jordy should be back by the night. Jordy's on IR. He's not coming back. Well, last thing I said, I saw Jordy's coming back. I can promise you. Don't deflate you. me. Don't deflate me. He's we, not, need jo- we need Jordy to help Cobb. He will not be back this season, my friend. Sorry about Last that. That was a pretty big injury. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just such a buzzkill. You know, mm-hmm. and you, and we're not the only team. A lot of teams deal with just big injuries that just change your whole season. Yeah. And that was one. that Pivotal yeah. guy and pivotal yeah, injury. Yeah, it's not the same yeah. without him. Mm-hmm. And he's a cool dude, too. And I hate to see that happen, but. He got paid, so he'll be all right. Yeah. So I saw Aberdeen's got a little bit of return time. You think we're going to see him in the slot at any time? Or? Nah, I don't think so. I don't think he's ready for you that. You think he's yet. too injury-prone still, too? He's little, and, and I just, I'm not sure he's a difference maker yet. But Janice is the guy we want to see kind of catch Janice, yep. And we haven't, seen Jones, much, but we haven't seen Jones as much lately. That's what got me surprised. Well, we've played some teams that uh, have good cornerbacks the last couple of weeks, and they've taken our 
our top targets away from us. But we'll get the Lions on. When, when is this thing? When is this live? Will this be before Sunday? Will people be Sunday. Yep. listen to this? So I'm excited. Yep. Um, it's, it, well, it's live right now. Somebody wants. Oh, to this is actually it. live right now. Yeah, it's live. Somebody wanted to click on the thing already and listen to wow, it. Wow, that's otherwise we'll that's just commitment post, right there. We'll post it and people can hear it later. Live. Click on the thing, or they can go to iTunes or iHeart and find us too. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Just because oh, Jeff's on iTunes, I thought we'd mention we're on iTunes. So we're not just doing this like inside the bar here. This isn't just like a <laughs> circuit, <laughs> closed circuit kind of deal. It might. You know. You know because what, Dave? It could be they, they, they might be lying to me, and all that money I gave them is for nothing. It's very possible. <laughs> because if we are doing it just for the bar, nobody is paying attention. <laughs> they're digging into their <laughs> crap. Except, legs. except when we talk about enemas while they're eating. Yeah. Well, you know, that I, caught a lot I, of people. I, I didn't quite realize I was doing that. <laughs> it just, I always said, I while just they're eating and, and, and I love Louis Armstrong. Why, I would I, why would that come? Why would that light bulb, that brown colored light bulb, come up over my head? <laughs> oh, my hey, gosh. Before I forget, though, I got I to do this too real fast. I got to give a shout out to my wife, Denise. When we were in New Orleans, I actually got her to eat her first oyster on a half shell. Ooh, first ever. At first ever. I've tried over the years, tried over the years, tried Did over the years. Lead so to she anything? said, she goes, it's not a bucket <laughs> list, but it's been there, done that. Yep. And then we went and we had some absinthe. And New Orleans style. Yeah, New yeah. Orleans style. $22 a shot? Are you freaking kidding me? Wow, really? But it was like, an ex- I mean, it was pretty cool. It was, cool. A, it was, oh, it was uh, one of their better bottles. Right. Yeah. Well, it was 136, 138 proof. And you sit there and you drink it over an hour. We're on our way to the airport. We walk out, we walk out of the bar and we're like, Woo! You've never <laughs> drunk anything for over an hour. Who are you kidding? That thing was gone in forty seconds. <laughs> no, this one I this one I took Denise's my time. Denise's lasted an hour. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. I had a beer chaser or two in there, but <laughs> <laughs> did you did you like the absinthe? It's yeah, kind I of an acquired I mean, well, taste. I, I like for a lot, I like, I like you know? Uzo. I like Sambuca. Yeah. So yeah, I, I do like it. I mean, it's one of those things too. I mean, you only can drink a couple of those types of things. It's kind of like you know the dad's you know the dad's root beer stuff. It's not your dad's root beer. I'll drink two or three of those on a on a hot day in the summer. But after that, I mean, it's so sweet you can't mm. drink that much. Yeah. Of it. Yeah. You know, it's, I'm not that big but, of a jelly bean liquor fan. Plus, so. the wormwood will drive you crazy. Ooh. That's why it was illegal for so long. I was already crazy, though. Yeah. Crazier in your case. That would explain the LaLaurie house, then, maybe, huh? Maybe they're I drinking too much so. absinthe there. Yeah. That is a creepy town, by the way. Most haunted town in the United States. Yes, it is. A lot of, a lot of history there. A lot of spirits still well, living. Was, when I found out it was built on rapists, murderers, and thieves. Because they sent all of the criminals over from Paris, France, because the, the jails were over. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that a they'll, share they'll song? <laughs> Isn't that a share Kids, song? Kids, Jansen. Jessica just go in there. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's hard. Just, Maybe that's great mind. Great I can mind. hear that in my head great for some mind, reason. But, but here's oh, no. the best one out of the trip to New Orleans. I'm, before I forget. I'm in a bar. I'm in a bar. And there's a guy in a Navy uniform. I start talking to him. He's buying a house in Illinois. Got a mortgage out of it. Wow. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. That's nice. awesome. Last time I got a mortgage on vacation, I was up in Door County. So it was all right. Yeah, just keep keep. We'll keep it rolling. Yeah, I always get I always get business when I go on vacation. Good for you. Good for you. Sometimes I get the business. Uh, what other What other highlights came out of the Nolens trip? I mean, just 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 absorbing the the town there. I mean, you know, I thought the town was really cool. It wasn't what I expected. It was actually better than I expected. The history of this area is unbelievable. I mean, we're I mean, we were thought this was going to be a one shot and done. It was on my bucket list. We've already said we're going back. Oh, good Because there's, there's things we want to check out. There's things Such we want to see. Such a great town. But there's so much history there. It was unbelievable. And I'm in, I like to look at architecture. When I go to that French colonial that they've got down, it's just amazing. But we had a great time. The people were friendly. The funny part is, as we're talking to employees at restaurants and bars, half of them were transplants from the Midwest. Oh, there's a lot of them down there. Yeah. David Perner, leader of Soul Asylum. Yeah. He makes his home in New Orleans. And then we were in a bar called Spirits. And Tanner, the guy who does bar rescue spirits yeah. or zippers? Spirits. Okay, just checking. <laughs> zippers, ladies. And My gentlemen. wife would not have gone into zippers, but we were in this bar called Spirits, and they were selling Tanner's book. Bar this is like his bar rescue book. So I'm still trying to figure out: Did he own the bar? Did he help rescue that bar? Because it was it was the only bar we walked into down there on Bourbon Street that was selling the book. So I thought it was kind of interesting. Yeah. Then I just found out he's doing a bar over on. 13, the old McCrackens. He's doing bar rescue over there. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I, I was like, shit, I should have bought the book. I could have gotten over, got an autograph, you know. Do the Whatever. whole deal there. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. I'm glad to hear you're go- you're, you'll go back. Yeah, I went to Coyote Ugly, and it was pretty ugly. I have not been post-Katrina to New Orleans. I've been Nor a couple times. I. Yeah. Saw the Packers win a Super Bowl. I met Ray Nitschke in New Orleans. Nice. Oh, there nice. you go, Jeff Ray Happy. <laughs> Right after up, the game, up, Jeff. he signed my uh, the bill of my hat. Nice. It was crazy. I saw this big group. Kind of moving, and I'm like, "What? Who is? Who could that be? Who could right. that be?" And there was nobody standing. And he, he was so short, I couldn't. Mm-hmm. You know, Ray Nitschke. I was a kid when he played. I envisioned him as this mountain of a man. 
It's like five nine. Yeah, maybe. What's what's that yeah. golf tournament you did? Tiny. Was it Max McGee or whatever? Yeah, was Max it? McGee's tournament. And wasn't Nitschke at that too? No, he was gone by then. Bart Starr came to that. That's right. Because I remember you. Horning used to, used to come I remember too. the photos and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. You came back. You brought me a cool little wallet. Of course I did. You know, Jeff. Jeff never brought me anything back from anywhere. No, but I worked. I worked. He for gave a company. me something. I worked for a company that hired um, some of these. Uh, celebrities, uh, pro sports celebrities, as celebrity bartenders and and for special events, and I got a chance to to chat a number of times with Ray Nitsky, and it was so fantastic. And he was such a good guy. He was a fantastic guy. And he'd always go, "Is that okay? Is that going to work for you? Because hmm. if, if that works for you, then it's okay with me. But only if it works for you." Hmm. And was I that thought, an impersonation? Just aiming to please, yeah, you know. It was either that, that was either, either him or Louis Armstrong. It was raised nose like this. I could hear it. I could see Nitsky sounding like that, Jeff. I think that was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, he. Um, but he was a great guy on the telephone, and I always and I always think that was a great experience because. Ray Nitsky, um was known to be such a tough guy, yeah. and he was one of the nicer. Just guys. a sweetheart. Yeah. A lot of those guys were. Yeah. I mean, White Peppers, all those guys. I mean, they're actually pretty nice guys. I mean, mm-hmm. they're they're pretty mellow. I mean, they're flip a switch when they get on the oh, field. Yeah. Reputation right. on the field's a different thing. Yeah. I mean, you talk to these guys. Roll on the field. They'll yeah. say that you go. You know, well, Clay Matthews. They talk about Clay Matthews, for example. And, and what a giving kind of guy is. And he goes, I get down to that football field and I just flip a switch and something else goes on. Mm-hmm. Well, I just read today uh, the former line and Dama Kong Su is uh, one of the. Th- Bad guys, you'd mm-hmm. think, on the field. He had to apologize to his mom. He swore during the game, and it got picked up on the mic. Oh, wow. And his mom ain't going to go for that. And yeah. so, so to think that to but she's okay guy. With the, but she's yeah. okay with the cheap shots. Mm-hmm. Apparently so. She's okay with stomping on people's yeah. heads. I was thinking about impersonations. The best one I can do is a Jeff Carver. I can talk a little raspy like this, like Jeff does. <laughs> I got to tell you, the podcast just took a dive right, right there. <laughs> and you know, well, it's well, interesting. Bring it back up. Bring it well, back up. You, you get those tough guys on the field, and then they turn out to be kittens off the field and totally. stuff. Yep. And then, and then the Pope was here in the United States recently, and I got a chance to meet the Pope. And you all, did? And you did all, not? Did you? Right. And, and all of that, you know, all that great love and everything that he projects, and then you meet him, you know, just in, in person. What an ass! <laughs> no, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> <laughs> that, we're, I think we, we might have, 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 have seen the way he treated that waitress. I mean, it was just it was it, it was shocking. He wanted a double shot of Jack and only got a shocking. Single. Like, a, like, don't you know who I am? Don't, kind of yeah, yeah, he, he, pulled the, he goes. He, he goes. Pulled BT, the Pope card. The Pope yes, card. He did. BT. Shut the hell up! No, 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 no! Just no, kidding! No, 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 no! Just kidding! That's how we joke. That's how we joke in Argentina. Yeah. No, no! Just kidding! No, really! No bueno! No, no, no just bueno. kidding! No, maybe! No. Uh, Carver, don't don't quit your day. Game. I want more trumpet. A little Argentinian flair. You know, maybe, we got, as long we got to the... put the wrap on yeah, the show. We got, here. About th- we got about three minutes. We got to make our way for the belly dancers here. Yeah. Well, the belly dancers come on at seven. And we've been having this habit of not being off the stage at seven. So then we and, have to dance. And, 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 and yeah, that's yeah. not, not good. And these people aren't coming to watch us dance. No, no, clearly, no. no. no that I, would empty actually, the place I out. think there's a couple in the corner, and one's I think ninety, and the other is about ninety-five. And I think they're looking forward to Tom Smith doing some belly dancing. Well, not going to happen. Uh, you know, you've heard of six-pack abs. Tommy's got a pony cake. Ah. Just, and so, nah, you know, nah, that's, nah. A, that's a sight to behold. It's, yeah, you know. That's one of those little, like, two-gallon dies. There you go, a little party <laughs> he, cake. He just pulled his shirt out and looked down. <laughs> I have to for, for all of you at home, he actually did that. Yeah, yes, well, did. you can't look down. Well, the boys uh, in green and gold, a, a little bit of a struggle as of late. So we're just going yeah. gonna to put uh, nothing but positive vibe out there for the Green Bay Packers. I think in part of my youth... It was Ernie Anderson. We were kind of riffing on that before we got started on the show, the mm-hmm. legendary yeah. uh, announcer for the NFL films. Mm-hmm. You know, but for Vince Lombardi, Bart Starr, Ray Nitsky, and the crew mm-hmm. at La- legendary Lambeau. And I think that, that uh, led me to part of my affinity for the Green Bay Packers. Well, oh, yeah. yeah. I'm trying to think. I think the Packer website, that Dan, is it Dan Conan that does the picks? He picked Packers 42-24 over Detroit. The last two weeks, he picked against the Packers, and he won. And they won. Wow. So, 42 would be a marked improvement from what we've seen the last well, couple of weeks. Yeah. They, they need to get some offense going this weekend for sure, and they and definitely need some stop defense. somebody. Just stop somebody. The last two weeks, it's been pathetic. It's De- always De- a fun time at defense Lambeau, Defense has been difficult it is. there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, maybe, Jeff could, maybe we should bring Jeff back to, to Lambeau with us sometime. He can play the trumpet. Hey, it could. You know, I was in the Vikings band in the 80s. Was that when you were in a participation ribbons too? No, the the, the NFL had a, had a uh, agreement with the uh, National Musicians Union, and every uh, stadium had their own band for the football teams. 
And so I was in the Vikings band for years. Nice. Yeah, uh-huh. it was great uh-huh. fun. Great players uh-huh. and uh-huh. great fun. Jeff, uh-huh. Jeff, we're going to ask you to uh, you you choose what you want to to play us out on the show while we'll do some final announcements. But before we do that. Where can people find out more about what's going on with you Post and the big wall. band and with Sean Johnson and your, your personal playing? So, you know, what do you got for us? Well, I'm on uh, Facebook, SaltTrek.com. Jeff Carver Music. Right. I'm at uh, on Twitter, Jeff Carver Music, and you could go to my website, JeffCarverMusic.com. Perfect. My schedule's always there. So, right. hey, you think no matter can, what you're cool. doing, if, yeah. if we want no to look for you, out, like under JeffCarver.Music, we got covered. No, you just totally screwed it all up, and everybody's now trying to scratch it. They're, they're, they're all, they're all dumber, for listening. It. dumber for listening. Changes. Too yeah. many yeah. dots, too many dots. Yeah. You yeah. messed it up. Jeff Carver Music? Jeff Carver Music. Dot com. Com. Uh, Dave nice. Sinekin, uh, that Twitter handle again is? I'm at TC Head Cheese. TC Head Cheese. And my yeah. blog is the. Headcheese.com. <laughs> and let me not tell you, Packer blog. Not, uh, I, I, enjoy, no, I enjoy. I enjoy reading his blog. Yeah, if too. you don't put the V in and it's just head cheese, you get some photographer in California. Okay. That's not me. That's not you. The, the headcheese. Head that's my Packer blog. Yep, and exactly. have you figured out what your new email address is at Academy Mortgage? Do you have that officialized in your head now, sir? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is there a dot in the middle of that? Well, it starts with a Tom. Yeah. Then there's a dot. Yeah. Then there's, there's a Smith. Smith. Yeah. Then there's at academymortgage.com. Yeah. Okay. They can always find me at, at OMSI Guy on Twitter. I know. We got that covered. Mortgages and BS on Facebook. Yeah, that's right. We got that 612 covered. 386 7672 if they want to have a good time. Yeah. Where are you at no. on Snapchat? Snapchat. Yeah, don't go there. I, you know what? I'm on there, but I'd never go on there because I'm on there with my kids. Yeah, my 12 yeah. year old lives on Snapchat. And I was, on, right? I was on Instagram for a little while because my kids, and I got tired of seeing this crap their kids, their friends were posting. Mm-hmm. So I got off a lot of that stuff. Carver, play us out here. Free what do you got for us? Free Free hey, no, this is this is because Tommy was in New Orleans. Hey, by the way, right. we'll be back next week, but not live, right? Nope, we'll be in the studio next week. Jeff Carver playing us out with a little bit of Nolens coming out of that fine trumpet of his at Ansari's. You know, we the Saints played awesome. We got it. We, yeah, they did. We got to toss out some great thanks, as always, to the Ansari family here oh. at Ansari's Mediterranean Grill and Lounge in Egan. You know where Ramsey is? He's at the T Wolves game getting a free bobblehead. Is he? Nice. You know how I like my T Wolves, don't you, City? I do indeed, as do I. My daughter's getting me one tonight. Next time we're going to be at Ansari's, it'll be a little bit earlier on our monthly schedule. We're going to do a show here December 2nd. December 2nd. Okay. Am I doing that right? I, I think so. either the 2nd or 3rd. 2nd or 3rd. Yep. we got okay. Tim Mahoney. Tim Mahoney. Uh, and Claire Killen's coming back. Claire Killen from Emerald, Mor- uh, Emerald in, Real Estate. She's in San Diego right now catching some rays. Yep. I do believe you're right, Mr. T. Uh, it's uh, the 3rd. December 3rd. Anyhow, it's going to be that Thursday, that first Thursday. Yeah, I can't remember why we picked that, December. but hey, you know what? We'll be here, and if you're not, it's your problem. Because we were going to do it on the second week, but Claire's going to be in Ireland then, so we bumped it up oh, a week. Oh, it's a all about Claire, all yes, about we, Claire. We want Claire Dave, on Dave the show. Dave and Jeff, you guys would like Claire. She's a little spitfire. Yeah, nice. she's good stuff. So anyhow, join us at Ansari's on uh, that first Thursday in December, and join us next week from the Alive and Social Studios. Almost tip off at Golden State. There you go, man. <laughs> and with Tom Smith and yours truly, BT. Thanks again to Dave Sinekin and Jeff Carver as the Saints go marching in on the we morning. We better get off the stage so the dancers can and get on show, yeah. Adios, folks.